this is dr pratima back with you again with the topic intrinsic semiconductors again where we have calculate the concentration of the holes in the valence band in my previous video lectures we have calculated the concentration of the electrons in the conduction band if you have really followed my previous video lecture this will be just very easy for you the only there will be a small change in the parameters with respect to the band diagram and the limitations what you take so if it will be very better i would rather suggest you to go back to my previous video lecture understand practice and then continue with this the link for my previous video lecture will be given for you in the description box given below. so now if i have to move along i would like to again ask you to settle with a pen and a paper so that you can follow along with me in the calculations so now this is a revision slide where you will see again the semiconductors being classified into two types based on the composition as elemental and compound where compound is nothing but mixing of elements and, and depending on the presence of impurity if you classify the semiconductors are classified as intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors so as i have told you in your syllabus you have only the right side part of the uh, classification which is the presence of impurities the semiconductors based on the presence of impurities which are classified into intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors and now our topic is intrinsic in the coming video lectures we will be looking into the in depths of the extrinsic semiconductor and the carrier concentrations and the fermi level distributions in n type and p type so let's follow with the intrinsic semiconductors so the intrinsic semiconductors what will happen when you raise the temperature of an intrinsic semiconductor why am i taking the intrinsic semiconductor at temperature greater than 0 kelvin why because my topic now is the calculation of the holes in the valence band so the holes will be formed in the valence band of an intrinsic semiconductor only when there is a rise in the temperature otherwise all the valence band is occupied by the electrons of the intrinsic semiconductor so when there is a rise in temperature these electrons sitting in the valence band will excite to the higher levels that is the conduction band so now i am considering the situation of the intrinsic semiconductor where the temperature is greater than 0 kelvin so now as i have told you when the when the temperature is greater than 0 kelvin some of the electrons will break the break the covalent bonds with which they have formed the bonds with, uh, with the neighboring neighboring atoms in the lattice and thus after the covalent bond is broken there is sufficient enough to move freely and hence they grab the temperature whatever you give and they conduct and move to the higher energy levels so the energy required for this mechanism to happen should be at least equal or greater than the energy gap only then they can cross the energy gap and reach the conduction band so for every electron leaving the vacant band vacant valent band there will be a vacancy which is a hole so this is what i have already explained in my previous lecture please go through it so now if i take the electronic structure with respect to the electronic configuration and the distribution of the atoms taking the quantum mechanical nature into consideration every silica atom silicon atom will be having 14 electrons out of which four are the valence electrons so these four valence electrons exist in the outermost shell when there is no rise in temperature but when there is a rise in temperature this valence electron in the outermost shell will grab that extra energy which you are giving in the form of heat and it will go out of the shell and reach the conduction band if and only if the energy what you are giving is greater than the energy gap so that vacancy is given for you as something different as a ball which is not there or which is absent so this is nothing but an electron just popping out leaving a vacant side which you call it as a hole because there is an absence of negative charge and hence here it is a positive charge which you call it as a hole 
So now, if I move ahead towards the bond diagram, if this 4 which is represent here, if you can take it as this silica. So what will happen? Every silicon atom will be having 4 valence electron. Suppose this is silica, silicon atom 1, 2, 3 and 4. This is at T is equal to 0 Kelvin. And now as T raises, what will happen? This, when there is a bond, this bond gets ruptured and this electron becomes a free electron which is into the lattice and this is left as a hole. So for every free electron, there is one hole. And if you look the same concept into through the band picture, this is the band picture which is depicted here. So here the, you see a valence band which is having all the electrons and once the temperature is raised, all these electrons one by one will take the energy and cross this energy gap and reach the conduction band, leaving the site vacant which is a hole. For example, if I still continue ahead after three electrons going, then this electron may go sit here and leave the site vacant which is a hole. And this is the energy gap. And this thermal excitation is helping you to cross this energy gap and reach this conduction band. So now we have to take this valence band into consideration because our aim is to calculate the number of the holes per unit volume, which is nothing but the whole concentration in the valence band. So first you have to understand what is whole concentration's definition, the definition of whole concentration. The definition is nothing but the number of holes, concentration means number always, per unit volume of the valence band of a given intrinsic semiconductor. It's nothing but the number of holes per unit volume in the valence band. And in the valence band, now we have raised the temperature, so there will be holes. Now of the whole volume of the valence band, take a finite volume. So you call it as per unit volume. So now this is the band picture where you are taking the limits of the valence band. So in my previous lecture, we have taken the conduction band because the electrons have risen to the conduction band. But now the holes are being formed in the valence band, right? So this is a picture at T is equal to 0 Kelvin for the same intrinsic semiconductor which I have been explained right from the starting of this video lecture where at 0 Kelvin there will not be any disturbance of the electrons and they will be completely occupying the valence band. So there will not be any electron excitations towards the conduction band because the temperature is zero Kelvin. Now, as you raise the temperature, what will happen? This electron, which is the outermost electron, will grab this temperature, whatever you are giving. And if the temperature is enough that it is more than this EG, it can cross and occupy this level, which is the lower energy level of the conduction band, leaving a vacant site, which is a hole. So that is what is happening here where a hole and an electron are forming. So now taking these limits into consideration, where what are the limits Ev, which is the top energy level of the valence band and EVB, which is the lowest energy level, that is the bottom energy level of the valence band, hence represented as EVB. B represents the bottom, V represents the valence. Okay, so taking these limits and also remembering that if this is infinity, this is a minus infinity. That is infinite infinity of E and infinity of minus E. If you want to represent this in terms of E, you can take it as E and minus E even. If you want to represent it in terms of infinity, that is positive infinity and this is negative infinity. Okay, so mostly we will consider only infinity in our mathematical calculations. So moving ahead, let us now try to derive an expression for the number of holes, that is the concentration of the holes. So among E in the valence band, let us take a finite volume, a finite volume which is DE. Let us take a finite volume which is DE. So if I am taking among this E, if I am taking DE, so if I take this E and then what will this become? E plus DE. So E plus DE. So between E 
and E plus DE, there is something which is DE, right? Were you able to understand? Let me repeat once again. If this is E and if this is after DE, what will be the state? E plus DE. So, in between, DE will be the dense uh, number of states. So, this is our area where you are concentrating. You want to see how many holes are forming in this area. So, what should you take now? You take for finite proof. Actually, our concentration is the whole balance band. But it in physics, what, whenever you want to study a bigger volume, first take a finite volume, a small one, and then go for it. And then you apply whatever concepts you want and whatever principles you can, whatever approximations you can, as much as you can, aiming towards your target. And then go for the integration you can get for the whole volume. Okay, so now that's what we are doing. Take the finite volume. So, P of E is the number of holes per unit volume, hence of the semiconductor having between E and E plus DE, hence it is DE. Okay, so it is equal to the density of the states. If you need to see the possibility for the electron, for the hole to form, first you need to know how many, how many energy states are there. So, that is the number of the energy states you need to know. So, Zv of E, where for in, in DE. So, Zv of E, DE. Why V here? There it is C. Here it is valence band. In the previous lecture where we have calculated the number of electrons, it is conduction band. And here the probability, the if, if you have so many number of energy states, then what is the probability for this hole to form or for an electron to leave that energy state. That is given by the Fermi-Dirac function. We will look very deep into the Fermi-Dirac function in my coming slides. So, now if I have the number of holes per unit volume, I want now the total number of holes between the energies EVB to EV. Total number. So, what should I do? I should go for the integration. Integration with limits what? Lower limit EVB upper limit EV. So, it's like lower limit EVB and upper limit EV. If this is the middle, then this will be minus infinity. So, now for my further convenience, I want to write this in terms of this minus infinity. So, if I want to get this states between EV and EVB, I can write it in terms of EVB to infinity EVB to infinity, first take these states and add to minus infinity to EV. Why ma'am? How can you write like this? This is not according to the picture, but it is according to the formula of the integrations. That is what integration of x, um, y, x, y, sum f of x, dx, uh, dz, f of z, dz can be written as integral of x to Mm, maybe some a f of z dz plus integral of a to y f of z dz. I think I'm right. If you are mathematical students, you can judge me. But the limit, whatever you take, you should take here. Then it will arrive at the same. You can take this rounded limits to whatever uh, convenience you have in your diagram here. So, I want to take it in terms of minus infinity. Hence, I have taken minus infinity here and minus infinity here. And so, the upper, upper and lower limits remain same like x and y as taken here. So, as taken here, EVB and EV should remain the same. Then only you can substitute this step for this step, 2 for 3. Okay. So, now if you see here, in spite of going from EVB to down, it's better if I write it from minus infinity to EV just for the order sake. So, I just took minus, okay, because integral of x to the power of, so xy dx or something xy dz can be written as minus integral of y to x dz, right? So, taking the same, I have just uh, changed the convention or so the signs so that I can exchange the lower and upper limits to one another. And the second term remains the same. So now if you see here, just imagine minus infinity first term. I am studying the first term. Minus infinity to EVB. Minus infinity to EVB means the region which is there here. Are there any states here? 
No. There are no states here. So what is there? What is P of E? The number of holes. Can, if there are no states, how can there be a possibility for you to study now the number of holes? No. So this becomes zero. Now go for the second term. In the second term, minus infinity to EV. So minus infinity to EV. That means it is covering the valence band. Hence, this term is good enough for us to study. So you can neglect this term and go ahead with the second term of the fourth equation. So taking the second term and you have P of E here. So substitute that P of E as ZV of E, the density of states into multiplied by the probability. Now, what is the probability of holes? See, we know very well that for every electron in the valence band, if it's excited to the conduction band, a hole is formed. So for one hole in the valence band, there is one hole in the conduction band. So you can write that the probability for the hole formation is equal to 1 minus the probability of the electron formation. Okay, that is nothing but FC of E what we have taken in our previous lecture. Okay, so that's why I asked you to follow the previous lecture first. Okay, so what is FC of E where FC of E is equal to 1 by 1 plus exponential of E minus EF by KBT. Okay, so now if you, yeah, so FC of E if you substitute this here, you will have to now, what should you do? Go for LCM because it has 1 minus, right? If you go for LCM, what will you get? 1 plus e to the power of so e minus ef by kbt and this becomes the same 1 plus by kbt minus 1 and 1 and 1 gets cancelled. So now you are left with something which is in the numerator, right, which I don't want. So what should I do? I divide with this numerator, whatever value which I have. So I have this. So let me divide with that for both numerator and denominator. So what will I left uh, be left with? This one. So very simple. Okay. It is very simple algebra. So now e to the power of 1 by e minus ef can be written as EF minus E, right? 1 by E minus EF can be written as EF minus E. So that's how I have written here. And um, what is EF here? EF minus E. As I have told you in my previous lecture, EF is always greater than E. So if EF is greater than E, there is something which is positive here. Positive where here. If there is something positive, it means that it is something other than 0. Why am, I say, why am I taking 0 because there is 1 beside it and for 0 power e to the power of 0 is 1 and I am saying something positive in the sense it is something greater than 0. That means this whole term beside 1 is something which is very 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 greater than 1. That means e to the power of ef minus e by kbt will be very very greater than 1. So this 1 can be neglected. So you are left with only this term alone. So take that term and move ahead. So neglecting that term, I am left with this. 1 by e to the power of ef minus e by kbt. 1 by e to the power of x can be written as e to the power of minus x. So that's what I have done here. I got e to the power of e minus ef by kbt. Finally, the probability. And we know the density of holes. This is an expression which we have taken for the density of electrons. So the same way you have to now take the density of holes from this formula pi by 2 into 8 mp star by h square. Actually we have taken me star in the previous lecture. I just want to show you the comparison so that it can boost confidence in you how easy it is. And now e. So now here you should take e v minus e. Okay, so Ev minus E, why did you take Ev minus E? Actually, this formula is framed taking the density of energy states between E0 to E pertaining the fact that E is greater than 0. So, but now here, Ev is greater than E in the present situation. 
EV will be greater than E. So you should take that EV is uh, greater. Hence, you should take it as EV minus E. Okay. Whole to the power of half into DE. So now you have F of E. You have you have f of e here, you have z of e here and you can substitute that in equation number 5. What is equation number 5? Yes, yeah, sorry. This is equation number 5. So, substituting that, you will get this equation. So, there is something here which is which are constants. Let me pull them out which are these two. I have pulled them out and I have just written in an order whatever I get. Now, I want to uh, like simplify this integration for this integration I am taking a substitution for let ev minus e is equal to epsilon if if this ev minus e is equal to epsilon then the limits from minus infinity if this is equal to epsilon as e tends to the lower limit infinity what will happen epsilon will become ev plus infinity something with infinity will always become infinity right so the lower limit transforms from minus infinity to plus infinity so this minus infinity have traveled to tra transform to plus infinity now let us see the upper limit what is upper limit ev so as e tends to ev what will happen to this epsilon epsilon is equal to ev minus ev so this is zero so now this EV has transformed to zero limit. Substitute the limit and also here you have now pi by 2, 8 mp star by h square. This remains the same. Substitute the limits that is replace the limits with whatever you got here. And EV minus E is epsilon. Substitute that and E. So since from this what can you write E as? E can be written as EV minus E right ev minus e so substitute that uh, sorry 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 ev minus epsilon so it is ev minus epsilon so substitute that as ev minus epsilon but i want to transform it or adjust it towards a, a, a given formula in integrations which is the gamma function so for that i because i have exponential of minus ef here minus epsilon here i want to also uh, sorry, here I have epsilon to the power of half. I want to also transform this so that I can get exponential of minus epsilon. So that's the reason why I have taken this epsilon outside and moved this EF inside so that I will be left exponential of EF, EV minus EF by KBT. If you take a pen and paper and do it, it will be very easy for you. So now you are left with the exponent. Uh, epsilon of half into exponential of minus gamma minus epsilon by kbt into d epsilon so this can be useful for you to write the result of it as by using the gamma function formula root pi by 2 into kbt to the power of 3 by 2 just substitute that in equation number 11 so then what what will you get p is equal to this you'll get so now here you have pi here, you have root pi. Pi into root pi give, gives pi to the power of 3 by 2. So I have a 3 by 2 bracket here. So push all the 3 by 2 powers into that bracket. Here you have kBT to the power of 3 by 2. So I have pushed kBT also inside. So now there is something which is 8 to the power of 3 by 2 and there is something here 2. So I just want to simplify that. So 8 to the power of 3 by 2. This simplification I have done in my previous lecture. For those new viewers, I want to make the way easy for them. So 2 cube to the power of 3 by 2. It can be written as like this. So this can be written as 2 into 2 square whole to the power of 3 by 2. So again, because oh, people who don't know this, x to the power of m into x to the power of n is equal to x to the power of m plus n. That is 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 will become 2 cube, right? So that's what formula I have used here. So now here, so now 2 into 2 square. Again, this a to the power of m, uh, x to the power of m into x to the power of n whole to the power of some z can be written as 2 to the power of 3 by 2 into 2 square to the power of 3 by 2. 
So I have now obtained something to the power of 3 by 2. So let me push this 2 which is carrying power 3 by 2 into this bracket which is carrying 3 by 2 parts. So I got 1, 2 here. That is 1, 2 here. Okay. So now, sorry. Yeah. So 1, 2 have gone inside. I am left with 2 square to the power of x to the power of m whole to the power of n is equal to x to the power of mn. So 2 square into 3 by 2, 2 and 2 gets cancelled. You are left with 2 cube which is 8. So that 8 comes out here. So 8 by 4 becomes 2. So I can I want to write this as nv. So I finally got e is equal to nv into e to the power of minus ev minus ef by kvt. So now I want to hold on to this n and p expressions, n which I have calculated using my previous video lecture and p which we have done in this present video lecture and now I want to come, settle an expression for the Fermi level. So now as we are raising the temperature as I have told you for every electron formed in the conduction band there will be a hole in the valence band. So the number of electrons will be equal to the number of holes. So you have the number of electrons, you have the number of holes, equate both of them and simplify them further and you have some when you equate you have some common terms like 2 pi kvt by h square on either side raised to the power of 3 by 2 cancel them and whatever you are left to 2 you have common you cancel them and whatever you are left over try to achieve at ef for that i have something like i am arriving at something like e to the power of x by e to the power of y and substitute through simple algebra sorry solve through simple algebra and i have i have arrived here very simple steps i need not do for you now still there is an exponential because if i get rid of that exponential i can get ef so for that let me take logarithm right log of e to the power of x gives you x and x my x has ef here so 2 ef by kbt minus of ec plus ef by kbt gives you this rhs where you got how did you get this ln of x to the power of m is equal to m into ln of x so this 3 by 2 comes here so now i want 2 ef so try to send this kb to, to other side how can you do that you just divide with kbt on either sides so that it will be cancelled and you are left with this so what are you observing here at t is equal to 0 kelvin at t is equal to 0 kelvin this term becomes 0 and you are left with ef is equal to ec plus ev by 2 right that means at t is equal to 0 kelvin if this is EV and this is EVB and this is EC, the conduction band where this is EC and this is ECT. So EF lies in between EC plus EV by 2. Now, as the temperature is raised, what will happen? As the temperature is raised, all the bonds will be broken in the for the valence electrons by the uh, which are grab, grabbed into the nucleus because of the forces and they will excite into the higher energy level hence the transitions will take place from the valence band to the conduction band and hence we say that the AF will be not be equal to EC plus EV by 2 but it will be temperature dependent which we will observe very nicely in the coming slides so now I have EF is equal to E, that's what is whatever I have told you is represented here. Okay, there's nothing new uh, than what I told you. So, but there is a diagram here. There is EG, which is EC plus EV by 2, that is T is equal to 0 Kelvin. Now, as T is equal to 0 Kelvin, what is happening and what is happening when T is raised? So, if you want to understand this, I want you to look into this diagram. So, at t is equal to 0 kelvin what will happen to f of e the probability function 1 by 1 plus e to the power of e minus ef by kbt so first if e is so here you have e and here you have f of e okay so let us and this is ef Okay, so for E is greater than EF, for E greater than EF, what will happen to equation number 1? If E is greater than EF, 
this term what will happen you should try to understand that term will become positive so f of e will be equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power of infinity e to the power of infinity and uh, it will become infinity plus 1 will become infinity 1 by infinity will become 0 so that means that at the levels which are greater than greater than fermi level means if this is the fermi levels all the levels above ef are unoccupied unoccupied levels okay now the second if e is less than ef if e is less than ef means all the levels below okay all the levels below what will happen so f of e is equal to 1 by 1 plus e minus ef where e is less so th this is e to the power of minus infinity it will become so e to the power of minus infinity means 1 by 1 plus 1 by e to the power of infinity 1 by e to the power of infinity 1 by uh, is what 1 by inf infinity is 0 so 1 by 1 plus 0 that is equal to 1 that means all the levels which are above or greater than ef are completely occupied so occupied means what one so the levels which are less than ef levels which are less than ef are completely occupied which is one okay you understanding right so now here it is zero f of e is zero and here it is one so now the third one what will happen if e is equal to ef at t is equal to 0 kelvin so f of e will become 1 by 1 plus z to the power of 0 by 0 0 by 0 becomes indeterminate indeterminate in the sense so i can get a range of values which falls in between 1 and 0 1 and 0 and this to the maximum what will happen is even if it is uh, uh, if if e is equal to ef i can get as uh, 1 plus e to the power of ef minus ef is equal to 0 by kvt okay so i'll get it as what 1 by 2 but this is uh, indeterminate value in the sense though I take it as if this is 1 I can take it as half as I have taken here it will be half but here you consider that it takes a range of values between 0 and 1 range of values between 0 and 1 because this is indeterminate okay so this is a very discontinuous function and non-differentiable okay so it takes so this is a step function here which you get for at t is equal to 0 kelvin so now as t raises what will happen so t is not equal to 0 kelvin so at t is not equal to 0 kelvin what will happen there will be the electrons we, we expect that all the electrons from the valence band will shift to the conduction band but in reality this kvt times level whichever is below the fermi level those electrons or the valence electrons which can grab the energy which you gave and like t is greater than zero kelvin and raise above to what kvt times again kvt thickness so there will be a di energy distribution at a width of kvt below ef and the kvt above ef kvt times above ef so that depletion is presented here and let's let's try to understand how it goes so for e is greater than ef and t is not equal to zero so what will happen is e is greater than ef and t is not equal to zero you will get a positive term here if you get a positive term here e is greater than ef yes you will get a positive term here and uh, yeah if you get a positive term here this will increase if this is increasing then this will decrease right yeah one minute so one by one plus e to the power of e, e is greater than ef so positive by t is not equal to zero so e to the power of positive will be positive so for if you take the graph that is you'll get e to the power of x for all 
x greater than 0 e to the power of x is greater than 0 for all x less than 0 e to the power of x is less than 0. So e to the power of positive in the sense it will be uh, something I can take it as e to the power of more than 0 that means it is greater than half it will be greater than half. So all the levels which are above above EF above EF above EF they will be having greater than half that means they will be lying greater than half in the sense like this they will, they will be increasing okay and if you see if you apply for the same here you will be getting um, f of e will be getting like less than half less than half in the sense they will be lying below the half where this is half okay so thus this step curve has converted into a decreasing curve. So now in the same way if you try to understand this concept as t is uh, raising for different types of t okay you will understand that Fermi level goes uh, the, the probability will be decreasing down the f and it will be increasing up the e because the energy is so the energy will be decreasing and here the energy will be increasing. If you try to understand this according to your curriculum, what will happen as the temperature increases? As the temperature increases, this is the conduction band and this is the valence band. First, there may be 10 electrons. In this 10 electrons, let me take that two electrons have shifted. So, this 10 will convert to 8. Okay. So, now, I am still raising the temperature, maybe like T1. Okay, so as I have raised the temperature from T to T1, maybe another two electrons will go. So now I am left with six here and four here. So what is happening? The probability to find the electrons in the valence band have reduced compared to T. Okay, so the probability have reduced. The earlier curve was like this but it has now reduced. Whereas in conduction band, the probability have increased to a number of two. So the earlier curve was like this and now that it has increased. Okay, so suppose if you still go for further for T2, which is still greater where T is greater than, sorry, T is less than T1, less than T2. So what may happen? So now it may come like this and it may go like this, right? And still if you decrease it may come like this and it may go like this and still if you increase it may come still more lower but here it may increase so this is how the f of e can be understood using the fermi dirac function and you can see how the electron distribution and the probability to find the electron can be understood in a mathematical way so from this, you can understand the different definitions of the Fermi level and the Fermi energy at T is equal to 0 Kelvin and T is greater than 0 Kelvin. So, at T is equal to 0 Kelvin, it's just like the upper level of a uh, of, uh, level of liquid. So, it is the uh, an upper energy level when there is no raise in temperature. So, at this upper energy level, whatever the electron has energy, that is known as the Fermi energy of the electron. And now you are increasing the temperature. So when you are increasing the temperature, now the Fermi level is completely dependent on the probability of the occupancy of the electron. So whichever has the highest probability of the occupancy of electron, there lies the Fermi level. And wherever it lies, that average energy possessed by the electrons, which are participating in the conduction because of the rise of temperature is its Fermi energy. So now, you have n, you have p. Now, you want to derive an expression for the carrier concentration of the intrinsic semiconductor. It's nothing but the intrinsic carrier concentration. You might have understood carrier concentration. Why are you calling calling now the concentration of the electrons are carrier as carriers? Why? Because they are grabbing the external energy and carrying that energy inside the material enhancing the material properties hence you call them as carriers and now these carriers can be either electrons or holes now if i want to 
calculate ni square through ni for ni through ni square i can write it as ni into ni as a product and for one ni i can take the number of electrons and for one and another ni i can take number of holes because either the number of electrons or the number of holes can be treated as an intrinsic carriers here so i have taken both of them and substituted for substituting for nnp because i have for both i can get uh, simple algebraic calculation where i have arrived at me into mp if the number of holes is equal to the number of electrons i can now even equate their masses and equate it to m star for my simpler thing and write this as c taking this t outside so i end up with this expression i thank you for your kind patience all throughout the video lectures and i hope that you have understood all my presentation and uh, the calculations only you can understand if you can do it very well meet you in my next video lecture thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates